Previously on the Song of Ilium... First, the quarrel. Then, the forces are displayed. Before, a truce and a duel. Last time in Book 4, Pandarus breaks the truce, and battle is joined. This time in Book 5, we pick up exactly where we left off, and watch in awe as Diomedes fights the gods. Book 5 was the first where my eyes were glued to the page as the heart-pounding and heart-breaking action reached a fever pitch. It gives me an opportunity to touch on a major theme of the Iliad, mortality. Death's taken quite seriously in the poem. It's always a tragedy and never trivial. Notice there are no red shirts. The landing party will consist of myself, Mr. Spock, Dr. McCoy, and Ensign Ricky. Ah, oh, crap. Orcs. I'm on 17! Me. Or zombies. What do you think? Zombie kill of the week? Close, but no cigar. Every single person killed has a name, a home, loving parents, family who will miss them, and lost hopes for the future. Violence is portrayed as something ugly, cruel, fast, and indiscriminate, rather than glorious or spectacular. The immortal gods are there to contrast with the young men brutally killed outside Troy. Heracles, Aphrodite, Ares, Hiri, and Hades can hurt, but never die. A catastrophe unfolds for the mere mortals, however, Homer making it clear we should be appalled, not applauding. No one in the Iliad embodies the solemn warrior who never revels in death. Congratulations, Captain. It's our first U-boat. Congratulations, sir. Fifty less crowds. Yes, 50 souls. More than Diomedes, so he's our first character study in this series. Diomedes emerged as easily my favorite character in the Iliad for a host of reasons. Unlike Achilles, he never glories in strength. Unlike Agamemnon, he never abuses power. Unlike Odysseus, he never lies. Unlike little Ajax, he's never sacrilegious. Our hero is dutiful, fearless, humble, wise and resourceful. Despite being the paragon of the Iliad, he never quite seems to get his due, to the point where Diomedes is absent from all the films, and receives scant literary attention. Perhaps this is because he's second best at literally everything. The greatest fighter after Achilles, one of the biggest followings after Agamemnon, the second cleverest after Odysseus, the second wisest after Nestor, though first in virtue to my mind. All this without being a demigod or born to power like so many in the Iliad, and as the youngest of the Greek kings. Diomedes, the name deservedly means godly cunning, is son of the famous warrior Gaius. Born an orphan, he avenged his father's death, then took his rightful crown in the Epigone War before the Iliad even begins. Book 5 is his Aristeia, a moment of glory all Greek heroes have, when he nearly kills Aeneas, wounds Aphrodite, then Ares, and slays many Trojans. This makes Diomedes the only full mortal to wound a god and live in all Greek mythology. Our hero has three more such moments to come, with the knight reconnaissance, robbing the palladium, and emerging from the Trojan horse. His nostoi, the return voyage Homer uses to signify hero's moral worth, is untroubled, which implies divine protection. Arriving home, Diomedes finds Aphrodite took revenge by making his wife betray him and give his crown to her lover. Instead of slaughtering everyone like Odysseus, or getting murdered himself like Agamemnon, indomitable Diomedes simply goes on. He moves to southern Italy, where his life has a whole third act as he founds ten cities in Apulia. In Roman literature, he meets Aeneas, who also fled westward after the war, and returns the sacred palladium, thus demonstrating he can make amends, unlike other, more famous Homeric heroes. Diomedes is the most unsung, but the most worthy of all the characters in the Iliad and I hope you enjoy his moment in the sun as much as I enjoyed portraying it. Without further ado, I present you Book 5 of the Iliad, Diomedes Fights the Gods.